Hello, this is my Chinese Nintendo classic. As you can tell, it is roughly twice the size of a Raspberry Pi in a clear acrylic case. And it's also twice as high. But it's the same length, pretty much. Also, one error uh, that I have run into just playing around with it before I even have got to tear it down is my sheathing has come out of my controller. But I guess you can't expect too much. This was $26.87 shipped through Alibaba. Shipping was free. So that wasn't too bad. Basically, it was just like paying $25 for a case for my Raspberry Pi to go into to make an NES Classic and the buttons are fully functional. This, this is your power button and this is your reset button. And on your controller ports, I've got this plugged into the wrong one, but this is controller port number two and that's controller port number one. And here I opened up the case. This is actually separate black pieces of plastic on top of the case, which is pretty cool. It gives a little bit more authentic feel. If you can see through the TV, you can see the TV through the vents here. The vents are actually air vents. And it is the same way for the bottom. Left my PlayStation account going so that way I could show that. And then here, is the inside. That first chip is for our weird Sega slash Atari style controller ports and also for the mo momentary switch. And then there's where all your games reside on this little FPGA style circuit board. And then back here is where we have our composite video out and it runs off of 5 volts at 2,000 milliamps or 2 amps. And let me get my Raspberry Pi out of its case. And here, as you can see, it'd be relatively easy to place a Raspberry Pi into this case. Although some people suggest you know, once you get the FPGA card out which I will pull out here in a second it's not the best job in the world but pretty much gives you the idea of how you can sorry about that my phone was saving data to its internal memory instead of to its SD card like I wanted it to I left my SD card in my Raspberry Pi but as you can see, if I can get it to stand back up, you have to invert the Raspberry Pi upside down to get it to fit in here because... Let me, let me pull the Raspberry Pi out here. If you're going to use the... Yeah, focus here. If you're going to use the internal power, which I would suggest not doing, I would I put something else on there since the Raspberry Pi already has power and, and a video and HDMI out port for that matter. You probably want to remove all that, cut your little your little stands out here. I'm trying to get some light on it there. Cut them out. And as you notice the Raspberry Pi will fit nicely in between the two main supports. Then you just have to do some trimming on the back. Which that should be do, no problem. Just use like an X-Acto knife or some people use a Dremel. Some people like to use soldering irons. I have not attempted that yet. That seems a little drastic. But yeah, that's how you can fit a Raspberry Pi into one of these guys and the USB 
it'd be relatively easy to pop in there. Just literally take those two guys out and then mount your USB in there, solder your wires, and then, you know, have a USB connector on or just have like a little short extender, like a little four inch, six, six inch, six inch extender and just plug them right in there. You're good to go. You're golden. But I really wish we didn't have this, uh, this micro USB B stuff for power. I'd really like to have a barrel jack someday. And as for the power, um, I don't know how you would be able to use that board again. I'm sure with a little bit of research, you can find the power leads. I'd prefer just pulling it all out and starting over fresh. But I'm sure once you... Once I poke around in there enough, I'll find the power leads. Although the power does come through the FPGA there, so. But yeah, once once it's all pulled out, you can examine it. Yeah, do as you please. So that is my master plan of what I'm doing with this Raspberry Pi. In this case, from Alibaba. The games on it are. Some of them are truly horrible. Like my version of Mario, I am stuck on World 5-1. It actually started me out on World 5-1, and when I complete the level, it still puts me at World 5-1. Every time I beat it, when I finish the flagpole dance, <laughs> whatever you want to call it that Mario does, boom, pops me right back to World 5-1. Not to mention that it plays at super high speeds, which is kind of odd. But yeah, if you like the video, go ahead and click the like button down in the corner. And if you want to, yeah, go ahead and click subscribe. Thank you.